Today marks the day that Spongebob broadcasted the television sets nationwide and touched our hearts. With ups and downs, 19 years, I will celebrate the anniversary with answering this one question. Did Spongebob start off well? Ayo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show and let's get straight into today's episode with a neat shout out from this fan art here. I recently got it on Twitter. It's from a user named Poco Lato, and I really do appreciate how it turned out. The link for the fan art as well as their Twitter is in the description below. So a legend was born with the French narrator having the very first speaking lines voiced by Tom Kenny, the same person behind the sponge himself, talking about Bikini Bottom but more specifically Spongebob Squarepants. I wonder what all of these things around Squidward's house were supposed to be. Are they bamboo as they state on the wiki? And why didn't they stay? But keeping track we see Spongebob's room which includes Gary, the clam that never really gets acknowledged in many if not every episode, and a metal wall. You can tell quite a few things change within the first season alone. For example the boat horn which is different here but is still pretty iconic when you think about it. Personally when I hear the horn I know it's the first episode which was the seedlings to what would become an iconic series. Spongebob's first words, today is a big day Gary, means more things than a little guy would have ever known. Today's the big day Gary. <coughs> Gotta be in top physical condition for today Gary. Seriously, why does it look like Gary spent the latter part of his night on the weird side of YouTube? I also really enjoy the whole nautical theme of a French narrator narrating undersea life, the way the horn sounds like a boat horn, all of these backgrounds, you can tell the former marine biologist and creator of the show, Steven Hillenburg, really had an inspiration for bringing these two things together that you wouldn't normally associate with each other. I also really enjoy the scene with Spongebob and the teddy bear dumbbells. I also noticed the I Heart Pain banner in the background to which if anyone who's ever worked out or worked hard in general knows, it can get pretty straining when you get into it. Although it serves more as a comedic gag more than anything else, Spongebob's passion for fry cooking at the Krusty Krab is something that goes unmatched when you think of any other cartoon fry cook. I don't know about you, but when I think fry cook, I think this guy. Also according to a few sources, Hillenberg worked as a fry cook in a seafood restaurant. After neat encouragement from Patrick, Spongebob admires the Krusty Krab for a moment. A lot of this episode was completed in 97, however it was released in 99 with various changes, one of them being this deleted scene here. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. SpongeBob That is very interesting to me because it screamed 90s and it is truly something that would have gotten dated very fast. I also enjoy the music they play here. It sounds like happy lounge or game show music. Also the way Spongebob just idolizes this clearly depicted to be rundown restaurant. It's pretty insane. Going to break a rule here but when you think about later episodes such as the original Fry Cook where the Krusty Krab was doing so much better, it really puts into perspective that the Krusty Krab is nothing without Spongebob and most likely was on its last leg without them. I know it is a little bit of a stretch, but with later episodes where Spongebob isn't there to work, it is shown that the Krusty Krab suffers as a result. This being confirmed in other episodes as well, but that type of determination for a rundown fry cook gig is just something you have to admire. Say what you want about him now, but we kind of need more hardworking main characters in the style of, well, the sponge in my opinion. Heck, even look at Culture Shock, an episode within the original three seasons of Spongebob. It's even shown that the Krusty Krab really doesn't do that well there. With all of those factors, Spongebob, as determined as he is, has doubts. Where do you think you're going? I was just- No, you're not. You're going to the Krusty Krab and get that job! Whose first words were, may I take your order? Who made a spatula out of toothpicks and woodchuck? And who's a big yellow cube with holes? I am! Who's ready? I'm ready! Who's ready? I'm ready! 
And with that, he approaches the big nose downer, Squidward, who shows his terrible cleaning game. What kind of all purpose cleaner is that? It's not working. Get some underwater Windex. But getting back to the point, seeing the very happy sponge and connecting that to the help wanted sign, he really makes his way over to Mr. Krabs with such an impressive speed that it surpasses the speed of salt. It would prove to be too late though, fortunately, as SpongeBob makes his trip over to them. <laughs> It also occurred to me that maybe the reason the Krusty Krab is empty is because it's cheaper to animate that way. Even in that case, it works well in the show's favor. Because of the desolate state of the grease trap, it makes it even more of a reason to have the eager sponge work there. So Squidward does not vouch for SpongeBob, thus making Mr. Krabs put SpongeBob on a wild goose chase. Do you just have hats like that to spare, or does no one come in to apply for a job here so you kind of had that hat waiting for the right moment? Either way, I have tons of questions. But anyway, with SpongeBob off to get a hydrodynamic spatula with port and starboard attachments and turbo drive we actually get crabs and squidward laughing at him notice the lighter colors on squidward and crabs eye stalks as well as the laughing animation for both of them we see that for squidward in a more refined variation but crabs that appears to be something that was dropped quite early interrupting their laugh we get the famous using that term very loosely anchovies who are putting their hands out of the window for some odd reason i love how crabs has this pretty experienced sort of nautical pirate personality that would get watered down in future episodes. He uses words like port and starboard, batten down the hatches, and you know, words like that. And I really enjoyed that facet of his personality. With the anchovies rushing in, Squidward tries to control the chaos. Please, please, watch. Can we show a lit? decency and form a neat single file line in front of the register. It's funny how once they cut back, the anchovies are already in a place to rock their boat. The arms of the angel now while the sponge is all finding the spatula that crabs and Squidward thought didn't exist, we get some really neat scenes of the anchovies behaving more like one singular unit and no longer a bunch of individuals repeating the same thing. I think one thing that the later seasons could learn is the idea of a single minded group of people. It could be used well when you don't think about Little Yellow Book or Stuck in a Ringer or Sunbleach. Once again, slightly breaking the rule about putting this episode in a perspective of watching it a first time viewer, but the the idea of anchovies as water and wanting one single thing and wanting it now, just hassling the two, is they're just desserts. Executed quite well, especially for being quite arrogant and gatekeeping the poor sponge. However, due to his optimistic and forgiving but also innocent and naive nature, the sponge ends up helping the two, finding the spatula which had just one in stock. And we get Tiny Tim's living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight montage, which I don't really want to risk playing here. It was a copyright problem for the folks who made this episode. I don't need it here for me. But putting that aside, I do enjoy this montage. From the synced motions of SpongeBob making the patties, to how he's so ecstatic to prove his worth and work for people who honestly don't really care about him that much. But we do, and that's what counts. With the fed audience, Krabs does this money dance, which I was originally going to make fun of him for, but when I saw the amount he made, I really cannot blame him for being this happy. He also had a name tag made for SpongeBob, which already adds 50 points on the Stranger Danger leaderboard. 50 more and we're going to have a conversation. Squidward tries to talk Mr. Krabs out of it, but Krabs isn't paying attention. He already made his money. It's also interesting that Krabs used this way to go to his office because it would actually be on the other side of the boat. Maybe he used said money to renovate the place. Anyway, the episode ends with Patrick being on the bad end of an overexcited fry cook and that was help wanted. Before I get into my overall thoughts, the month of May is ALS Awareness Month and as some of you may know, this as that that disease attached to the ice bucket challenge is actually more than that. I'm not going to get on my soapbox and critique those who never did anything but did the challenge for the sake of it and never really promoted ALS because there's so many other things to spread, so many other messages, and you can get really burnt out when you spend your entire life trying to spread so many messages. And that really isn't fair to the people who suffer from this terrible disease. The reason I'm specifically talking about it in my video is because Steven Hillenburg, along with many others, was diagnosed with ALS 
ILS specifically for Hillenburg back in 2017, but he continued to work on the show. And the least I can do is spread awareness for this. But I also plan to donate 400 of my own money to the ALS Therapy Development Institute after researching a great organization to help. Although very rare, those who receive it may experience muscle weakness, difficulty in speech, among many other things. And if you want to help, I'll have some links in the description below. It is my way of giving back, and with reading on how Hillenburg is also a very introverted person who values his privacy and has a few passions that aren't really linked together and was described as a workaholic, all of these things and more just inspired me about the guy. So thank you, Steven Hillenburg, for what you have given to the world, and I hope you continue to create amazing things. Did SpongeBob start off well? Yes, absolutely. I think it had a very impressive sense of childhood innocence, but passion and determination as well. Not to mention the underwater feel that I would go on to miss in later seasons. I think the story and comedy was very well done, and it was just interesting overall to go back and look at this retrospectively. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think SpongeBob started off well? Special thanks to the patrons that support me in the month of April, and make sure to follow me at the Alpha J Show on Twitter and go into my request video for any other topic you think I should cover. If you really like this video, you should check out my entire SpongeBob playlist or the live reading of this very episode. Make sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time. I hope your time is well spent and Alpha out.